So we talk a lot about the real estate market. I'm big on talking about it as a home first before we talk about it as an investment, right? I always suggest that my, my parents still live in the house that I was raised in. I mean, that, that's so valuable as, as memories go. Our neighbors still live there. I mean, that to me is what real estate's all about, the community that we build. And in America's finest city, how important is it for uh, building San Diego one house at a time? So that's why this information is so important. But I do want to really focus today on if you are selling your home, how to get top dollar for it, right? Let's look at the economic side of things, uh, how to not make any mistakes. And, you know, what if you are retiring and you're trying to figure out what you want to do? We got people moving downtown now that are retirees and empty nesters. It's amazing the city that we're creating here. And it's all done one house at a time, and there's nobody better to help us uh, understand this than our good friend. You see him on the show all the time. You hear him on my radio show, George Lormer. George, good to have you on the show, man. Thanks, Craig. So how do you see the market going right now? We're in Q4. Right. How are we going to finish this year? Well, I, I think very strong. What we're seeing now is, you know, the prices, people were a little bit enthusiastic come, you know, late spring, early summer, and it seems like it's flattened out. So I don't think we've seen any drop in price, but I have seen people be more realistic on getting the prices back to what the sales are. It's getting normal. Normal. Right. How about normal. that? It's, it's nice to see normal, right? 40 day average market time. Okay. So a little over a month and then another 30 to 45 days with the new loan changes. So it's taken a little bit more so, for the escrow. And we'll, we'll leave that topic out for right. another day, but there are some new laws in financing mm -hmm. that are coming through. They're always changing the laws and changing the landscape. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so you're selling a house, right? You want right. to get this home sold. Now, everybody's got a different story. Maybe you're right. moving up. Maybe you have a job transfer. Maybe you have to. Your, your house underwater, whatever it is. But there's certain strategies to right. selling. Help us identify some key strategies. Okay. So here's, you know, three common home, you know, selling strategies and mistakes that you can avoid. So the okay. first thing is pricing. You know, are you pricing it too high, too low? They can both be problems, Craig. Interesting. Well, yeah. I would think um, in a market with low inventory, I would think that pricing high is something you probably get a lot of people wanting to do. A lot. Yeah. yeah. So there's typically, you know, here's a quick example. You have a range of prices for a neighborhood, 500000 up to 550 for a similar size home. You know, the sellers will look at the 550 and think, my home is nicer than that because of X, Y, and Z, and they'll add yeah. that on. When really the range of prices is 500 to 550, so the one that's 550 is probably pretty nice for the neighborhood. Might have a few different things than the other ones, but generally within the range is somewhere where you're likely to sell. One of the cool things you do, and you mentioned this, I think the last time you're on the show, is you'll yeah. do a full blown analysis. Absolutely. Sometimes people rely on these online resources. I'll leave the names out of it, <laughs> Zillow. Uh, <laughs> you know, they rely on these things that aren't accurate. So, I mean, you can get a comprehensive outlook. George can do that for you. What are, what are some of the mistakes that you've seen people make? So pricing, what else? Yeah, so, so the pricing, and then also just real quick on the pricing is putting it on at what people are asking. Because okay. we know very often, you know, maybe only six or seven out of 10 properties in a market actually sell. So the other three or four don't sell. Hmm. So sometimes when people are too, they price it based on what's active or what they're competing with. Makes sense. Yeah, the next thing is, you know, when you get an offer that comes in or when you have a buyer in escrow, sometimes sellers want to hold on to that deal too long. Got There's it. a contingency oh, as period. A, as opposed to saying, hey, look, the deal's not working. Right. Bail on this thing, right. get a new buyer. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Because in our market, you know, you probably know this, Craig, from having bought a home recently, is you can get your deposit back. Right. Any times prior to the contingency. So the sellers are making these plans, and the buyers may or may not be committed to the property. And the only real way we know is for them to complete the inspections and to remove in writing the contingencies, and that causes their deposit to become non-refundable. You know, th this brings another really valuable point to, to give to our audience here in that I, I think too often people rely for their realtor on, on someone that they just know, a mm -hmm. family friend, maybe their kids play little league together. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget there's a major contract in there with yeah. contingencies and earnest right. deposits. You got you got to be careful a lot of mistakes can be made. Yeah. Um, pricing strategies, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what are some of the strategies to price it properly? Right. So what you want to make sure is when you do this, you want to tap into the buyer's psychology on pricing. That's number one. And then number two, which goes in line with that, is create an auction effect. 
So if you can get it priced really well, make it the best thing, the best deal on the market hmm. for that buyer, you're likely to get an offer quickly and even multiple offers. Now, so you price it, right? So let's say hypothetically you have a home and you think you're, you're in the $700,000 yeah. range. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to price it, right? And it's another thing right. to take it to market, right? Right. And now I've always said that you're one of the best marketers in the business. Thank you. What, what, the world's changed. You right. know, I mean, people are buying homes online. Mm -hmm. These 3D tours and even right. Facebook. Right. I mean, it's crazy. What are some of the strategies in today's yeah. world of connectivity and technology that, that you think are important to take that home to market? Right. Well, we've got an example of some of the technology we do, the aerial photography, on some of the pricing analysis that we do as, like you said, a free offer for people who are thinking of selling. But let me get you back to basics. So let's go the opposite way of what you were just saying. How about we meet with the seller? How about we take him and drive the neighborhood and have an honest discussion? Hey, Craig, you've seen these five homes that you're competing with. What's your thought? How does yours compare to that one with the new Mine's better kitchen? than all of them. Exactly. Right? <laughs> and, which is what we hear. And then we'll get specifically, how do you think buyers will feel about the wallpaper? Well, yeah. I understand wallpaper is not you know, as common nowadays and people don't like it. So I think once you see from a buyer's perspective what you're competing with, it'll let people see a reality. And it's just kind of the opposite of the whole internet and marketing. It's actually looking as if I was a buyer going out today and we're never gonna be objective because I love my home, you love your home, oh, your yeah. parents love your, their home. And so, they expect the world out of you, right? Exactly. I heard you're the big George Lorimer, heard all about <laughs> you, saw you on the American Dream. Right, You're a big it. shot. <laughs> Give me $800,000 for the $700,000 house. I'm sure you get a little bit of that. Yeah, we do and you know, Really, and that's our third item you know, that I was talking about, is waiting too long to make any adjustments in price based on buyer feedback, based on showings, based on not getting showings, or even if you get a request or an offer, waiting too long to respond. Hmm. Because you know, this is the thing, Craig, I've sold you know, almost 1,000 homes here in San Diego for doing it for many years, and the deal is, Deals never come together as people sleep on it and wait on it, right. both from a seller's perspective and a buyer's perspective. Um, a lot of buyer's remorse creeps in. I got to tell you, George, I, I can't believe I share this with our audience, but mm. so my background is originally in real estate and mortgage banking, and a lot of things have taken off with the media. Obviously, we have this show. But I've been around real estate for a long time. Yeah. I founded the Real Estate Radio Network. Inman News mm. nominated me for most influential real estate, so That's now I'm awesome. bragging. But the reason I share all of this if there's anyone who should be just a little maybe numb to mm -hmm. the emotion of the deal, I think I should be that guy. Right. When I bought my house, there was a part of the process about a week in. <laughs> I freaked out. Right? It was like 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the market, and I'm like, I've overpaid for this thing. I want out of the deal. <laughs> I had a freak out moment. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. Yep. Next day I woke up. It was gone. I don't even know what it was. And I, you know, I... I blamed it on the listing agent and told everyone they said something weird to me. Oh, of course. And yeah, of yeah. course, I had to blame it on someone else. <laughs> right. But the, right. the point is, is it's a very emotional buy, right? It it's is. A, it's a Absolutely. lot of money on the purchase side. It's a lot of money on the, the listing side. Yep. So uh, no matter how uh, unemotional you are when it comes to investment decisions, and I say investment, you could be a first-time homebuyer, still mm -hmm. an investment. Right. Uh, you're going to encounter things like this, and, and really advice is so important. It, you know, it's critically important and, and we, you know, I've been doing it for many years, like I said, and have a team and we get that, you know, people, yeah. they love you in the beginning, then you hit a little bit of turmoil. We're always there. Yeah. We're patient. We don't take things personally. We know it's a huge decision for people. They get emotional and we understand it. Here's a good metaphor yeah. in, in parting here. Think about it like an airplane. You, you, you're going to hit some turbulence, especially right. on the financing side. If you're getting a mortgage, Ugh. new laws coming out, you're going to hit some turbulence. But when you're working with pros, they're going to land the plane and you're going to be happy that it all worked out for right. you. And, and San Diego is America's finest city. What a great place to be able to accomplish the American dream than here. George, appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you, Thank you for coming in here. Always. Uh, Always great information and, and a great guy to connect with outside the show. All right, we're going to be uh, continuing on. We're halfway through. We got more information about what's happening with the market, getting some insurance stuff, going to get to some of your emails. And we're going to go out in the field. Earlier this week, we were out visiting some of the micro markets of San Diego. We got some amazing stuff, even Coronado. So stick around. You're watching the American Dream. We're going to be back here with you in just a moment.